something a bit deeper into the scientific advice upon which the government is basing its approach. One of those they have been receiving expert advice from is Graham Medley, a professor of infectious disease modelling who chairs the government committee of independent expert modellers providing advice on the virus. He believes we're going to have to generate what's called herd immunity whilst protecting vulnerable members of the population, and that behaviour change is vital. He's also told this programme that he thinks the impact of the epidemic might one day be remembered as being on the same kind of scale as the London Blitz. He spoke to our UK editor, Katie Russell. This virus is going to be with us um, for a long time. We're going to have an epidemic and then it will become endemic and join in with all the other coronaviruses that we all have all the time, but don't notice. We're gonna to have to generate what we call herd immunity. So that's a situation where the majority of the population are immune to the infection. And the only way of developing that in the absence of a vaccine is for the majority of the population to become infected. Ideally, if I could, what I would like to do is to put all the, all the more vulnerable people into the north of Scotland uh, and keep them there, everybody else into Kent and have a nice big epidemic in Kent so that everyone becomes immune and then we can put people back together again. But we can't do that. So what we're going to have to try and do, ideally, is some kind of manage this acquisition of herd immunity um, and, and minimise the exposure of, of people who, who are vulnerable. In terms of data, can you just talk about that a bit in terms of what your modelers, what they're looking at? Yes. So, so one of the problems that we're going to face, and we're already facing, is the fact that um, our main kind of source of data is um, deaths, unfortunately. But those, those deaths happen about a month after the first infection. One of our concerns, though, is that this delay between infection and death of about a month uh, is going to cause us problems if people don't change their behaviour until they start to see deaths become very big. And then at that point, people decide, oh, you know, we better start washing our hands, we better start you know, avoiding contact. Um, but there's still a month's worth of deaths to go through the system. We're also concerned, I think, to some extent, that, that, that the optimum things for people to do are not going to be the best things in terms of managing this epidemic. I'll give you, give you an example. So, so all of the talk about introducing distancing, about reducing contact, has been of discussions about things that happen outside the home. So football matches, public gatherings, restaurants, bars. But very little discussion about what actually happens inside the home. But an awful lot of transmission will occur inside the home. People in a time of crisis will want to go home, you know, will want to be with their kids, will want to be with their parents. You know, they will want the grandparents to see the grandchildren. But actually that might not be the best thing to do. When you hear the criticism that the government's not acting fast enough, what do you think about that from a modeler's perspective, from a kind of how this will play out perspective? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a simple modeler, and so I would like people to do exactly what I tell them all the time, you know, because then I'm, I feel confident that I can manage the epidemic. But um, I can't, um, and, and talking to people, getting them to change their behaviour is not my area of expertise. You know, we are asked questions such as, what happens if we close schools? You know, it's not up to us to decide how schools are closed. What do you think about school closures? So, so school closures are, are interesting um, because they really depends on what the children do when they're not in school. So, that, so when the children are not in school, then you end up with somebody has to look after them. So either people are pulled out of work uh, and to look after their kids, uh, or else you find somebody else to look after your kids. Um, so parents look around, and the obvious solution is grandparents, you know, in many cases. And so you end up with a situation where you're actually creating the kind of mixing you exactly want to avoid. And so I think closing schools will stop a little bit of transmission between the children, who are not vulnerable, but potentially increase the transmission 
because there's a sort of vulnerable section of the population. So I think we just have to be very careful uh, in terms of closing schools that we don't make things worse. So in terms of changing mindsets, do you think there is a simple message you could give us? So most people have a fear of acquiring a virus. But I think a good way of doing it is to imagine that you do have the virus yeah, and change your behaviour so that you're not transmitting it. Don't think about changing your behaviour so you won't get it. Think about changing your behaviour so you don't give it to somebody else. And do you see this being a three-month epidemic, a six-month epidemic? What, what, how do you see it? So perversely, to some extent, the more better we manage it, the longer it will be. Um, the worst case would be to have an uncontrolled epidemic and that might be all over in, in a matter of, sort of you know, 15 weeks or something like that. Much better is if we keep transmission rates down, then we end up, end up with an epidemic that's much lower but much longer. You know? At the end of it, we still end up with herd immunity. We still end up with most people having had the virus, but we've done it in such a way that we've kind of controlled it and stopped that explosive pattern. Do you lie in bed at night worrying about where this is going? Do you have a picture of how this is going to impact on all of us? So anyone who tells you they know what's going to happen over the next six months is lying. In my personal opinion, we're, we're kind of in a situation whereby we're either going to have a bad epidemic, in which we have a lot of suffering and a lot of death, or we don't, but we won't because we've changed our behaviour significantly. So we're going to end up in a position afterwards where there's been a huge social change and a, and, and a huge impact you know, either way. So this is the kind of event, I think, that is going to live on for decades in, in terms of people's minds. Um, and, and you know, if you kind of look back at history and say things like the, the London Blitz and whatever, these things that get fixed into folklore and people talk about for decades to come, I think this is going to be 